I'm going to say boundary condition. The first one, which is usually found, okay, at solid fluid interface. You will get V fluid equal to V of solid. This one is called no slip condition. We already mentioned this before. Okay? Second one, at gas liquid interface. Momentum flux perpendicular to the interface is approximately zero. Why? If you um, consider, let's see, if you have solid here, suppose there are liquid flowing in this direction. Up here is air, all right? If somehow you can force liquid to flow, do you think that the air above it would flow in the same direction as liquid? Would air here flowing? No, it can remain stationary as long as the air is not disturbed. Only liquid would flow, right? That means liquid cannot induce air to flow. If liquid cannot induce air to flow, that means liquid cannot transfer momentum through the interface to air. Because earlier, we said that upper level of liquid can flow because underneath liquid can give some part of momentum to upper layer and that induce the flow. But in this condition here, air will not flow. So therefore, you say that momentum transport at this interface will be zero. So that's come to the second um, boundary condition. All right? The third one is at liquid-liquid interface. How can this liquid-liquid interface possible? This is applicable only when you have immiscible fluid, like water and oil. They are not diffused together. So we call this one immiscible fluid. Only at that condition that you will have liquid-liquid interface, okay? For liquid-liquid interface, mostly the condition would be something like this. The momentum flux perpendicular to the interface are equal. That means when you have liquid one, you have liquid two flowing, let's say flowing in this direction, okay? Liquid 2 can transfer momentum across these boundaries to liquid 1. So therefore, momentum flux calculated based on this side supposed to be equal to momentum flux calculated based on that side. They're continuous in terms of momentum transfer. Okay? Also, the velocity profile supposed to be continuous as well. So that means velocity of the liquid one should equal to velocity of liquid two at the interface. Okay? Now, these three boundary conditions are not the only three. We can have more 
But these three are, are the most common. If, the, if these three cannot be applied to the problem, you need to come up with another one, the new one, that I will show you in other examples. Okay? But for this particular example, if you want to find C1, you will need to apply one of these three boundary conditions. Which one is applicable? Can the first one apply? First of all, we want to find the value of tau at one specific location of x. So we need to find tau, not v. Okay? So the first one is not applicable directly. Can the second one apply? Yes. yes. Can the third one apply? No, because we have only one single kind of fluid. Okay? So the only one applicable is the second one. That means momentum flux at the interface equal to zero. What is momentum flux at the interface? Tau, right? Okay? So our boundary condition would be at gas liquid interface momentum perpendicular to that interface which is tau xz should equal to zero all right now the point is in order to find c1 you need to determine both tau and x can you translate these words into number what is the x at this condition x is equal to what? Zero. zero, can you see that? Because at the interface is this line. This line, x is equal to zero. So you can say that at x equal to zero, tau xz is equal to zero. Because tau xz is the momentum transport perpendicular to that interface. Remember, xz that means z momentum transported in x direction so in x direction is going perpendicular to this interface all right so apply that to equation one that's mean zero equal to zero plus c1 or c1 is zero okay then you have tau xz equal to rho gx cosine beta. That's the first equation we got. This one show you shear stress at different depth from the surface of the liquid. So sometimes we call this one shear stress profile. Okay? And you should notice that at x equal to zero, shear stress is zero. At x is maximum, shear stress is maximum as well. And the function here is linear. So our shear stress profile looks something like this. This is fluid. If you consider shear, it's going in in which direction? Is going down or going up? Going down, going up. It's going down. Why? Because 
tau here has the same sign as x. Both rho, g, and cosine are positive number. Okay? So tau is going this way. At the surface, tau is zero. And deeper, tau is getting bigger. So profile of the shear looks a linear like this. Okay? Now, once you obtain the shear stress profile, this one is not the end. Because we do not want shear stress profile. We want velocity profile. So you need to convert shear stress into velocity. How can we do that? What is the equation? that relating tau and v. Newton law, there is only one. And we already determined earlier that tau xc is minus v dvz by dx. This has been found from last class. So we have to put that into the equation. Alright, so I'm going to bring this to the right hand side, bring the S to that part as well, and then integrate. Integration on the left hand side gives you Vz. On the right hand side, you get minus rho g cosine beta divided by mu. Integrate x dx right x dx would give you x squared over 2 once again we do the integrate without limit so you need to add another integration constant this is our equation 2 so to find this integration constant you will need another boundary condition. The condition should give you velocity at one particular position. What is it? The first one, right? So the first